Why I wanted to um, save this tree is when I found out that it actually is so important to the city of Brighton and, and Hove um, that they are the largest uh, English elm in the world and that the biggest English elm in the world um, marked us as uh, the, the two twins. I got invited by somebody called Alistair Peters, um, who used to work for the council, but now works for Conic Tree Care. I got asked to come and look at this tree, which was destined to be burned uh, in 2020, and was cut down in 2019 and was taken to a place called Waterhole, which is just outside Brighton, um, where in fact they take all the diseased trees, um, and the reason they take them there because it's, got, it's, it's in a valley, so the, the beetle cannot fly out. Um, so it's just a precaution basically to keep everything else safe. So I, I got invited to come and look at it and see if I can do something with the tree uh, or take you away because he didn't want it to be burned. He, he just wanted to save it as, as if possible. So when I came to look at this thing, which was just lying in a lying position, I just fell in love with it and it was just so beautiful. So I. I didn't obviously had the funding, I didn't have the space to move it, I didn't have the equipment to move it because it's two, three and a half ton weight. So I've asked if they would allow me to debark the tree at Waterhole um, where the bark can then be burned and that would give me a bit of time to see if I can find the ways of funding the project and taking it from there. I asked a place called Secret Garden in Camp Town. Um, so I knew the garden was going to be empty uh, for a period of time, so I've asked them if they would allow me to move the tree to the garden. And then Conic Tree Care stepped in um, with help with transportation and paying for the cost for the tree to be moved. Um, so in order to move the tree, we couldn't just lift it because it would just break. So we had to design an internal uh, basing structure with lots of timber. We got two people to come and help um, to do the basing of the tree and successfully move it to Secret Garden. Um, so that's when the project in theory started. And this is probably the time when we got in touch with Burris, who kindly stepped in with helping with all the chemical preservation uh, treatments for the trees. And it's been a journey since. Uh, Burris are always keen to get involved in helping the community and any charity events that we can do. Um, we first heard through this from head office and also through Elpida herself um, coming to us in branch. Um, we just wanted to help the local community um, and this seemed like a really good project to get in, involved in. We've specified products um, and donated those products to support this project as much as we can. We've donated two products and one of those is the Two Prey Wood Hardener and the other one was the Complete Plus Superior Wood Preserver in Ebony Black, I believe. When I took the project on, I didn't realise how much challenges we would have. We took quite a long time to get some of the funding in place. We went into winter, which then we had the problem with the weather. We were working outside, so the moisture was a big problem. Uh, constant rain, then the snow came in and, and winter settled in. But, but the other biggest challenges was the actual the timber itself and not fully knowing what to do and how to approach it. The tree was very uh, wet, the timber was very wet, there was a lot of wood rot in the tree as well. Uh, we did not know what to expect when we started doing the repair. Um, it was always deemed going to be a challenge. So we used a combination of two products, one being the Fix, which is our stabiliser. So you paint that into the timber, draws into the timber, it adheres itself to the timber and the resin adheres to that. So it almost acts like a wood stabiliser. And the resin we used was a Bioflex all round. It's a new product we bought, brought onto the market. And the reason we used that is it's got 40% bio-based raw materials. So we thought it would be a good fit. There's lots of movement in the form and there's, there will be constant movement. Whatever we've done to the tree, the tree would still be moving and, and twisting and bending and every time the weather changes, the tree will change as well. So, so it's a, that's the biggest challenge really, of not fully, um, you can plan and predict it, but you don't know exactly what might happen. Um, so we've gone along the lines of doing our best in terms of preserving as much as possible 
and treating the timber. Uh, the stabilising of the tree is very important from the point of view it adds strength, resin, adhesion to the wood. So we use the combination of steel cables inside the tree to try and prevent the tree from splitting and breaking apart. Um, Alpida did quite an excellent job on that. The other reason we use the stabiliser it acts as a moisture barrier. So we suspect there might still be areas in the tree that have wood rot in it, but we couldn't take it all out because we wouldn't be left with much of a tree. It will need a constant maintenance and you'll need an observation um, to continue with the process of preservation. So it's, it's not going to be, once we finish the project, that's not going to be the end of the project. I was kind of mesmerised by all the patterns which mark the trees. It's almost, it's almost like a, a skin that's been tattooed, like we humans tattoo our skins. Um, but this is kind of like being naturally kind of marked and I, I wanted to preserve that and I wanted to show those markings. Um, and the reason for the guild um, um, on the internal is to kind of make the sculpture almost shine from inside out. It's this whole kind of layer that I'm very interested about, the internal space of the body and how uh, we um, reflect what's inside comes out on the outside. Um, so I kind of wanted to a little bit push that idea of of this beautiful internal space. And when you see the project, well, or when you see the artwork from a distance, um, the gold would kind of draw you in. But the other um, idea has always been to bring it back next to its twin. So I, we don't forget the twin still living. And I wanted to have this kind of almost like a cycle of living and dying and, and bringing them together as, as one again. And, and that's why the tree has been positioned directly on its markings, slightly juxtaposed um, from, from the original cutting place. So when the scaffolding comes out, um, you'll be able to see the actual footprint of the tree. And that would be always there. The last few weeks have been quite challenging and interesting, but like any challenges, are usually good challenges. So we've had, um, uh, we've gone through the preservation and conservation of the tree, stabilizing the tree, making it sort of uh, stay together, uh, through pinning and um, supporting the timber structure, then preservation methods, then the final stages of gilding. And that we're working with the Dutch metal is quite been, although I'm a gilder and I do gild, um, I work a lot with gold leaf or silver leafing. I was told on many occasions you should never use Dutch metal outside. <laughs> so that's been the biggest skill actually learning how to stop the oxidation of, uh, because Dutch metal is made out of different metals, basically it's got brass, it's got copper. So the more copper the leaf contains, the quicker you oxidize as soon as moisture hits it. So that's been the biggest learning curve. Really. Thanks to a few colleagues in my field and conversations, I've managed to find the ways of stabilizing uh, the uh, moisture affecting the metal um, and slowing down the process of oxidation, um, which means the work will change and will age um, as the weather affects it, uh, which is very different to pure gold leaf. A gold leaf is very stable, you don't have to do anything to it. You can protect it, but you don't have to. But in this case, I had to spend some time um, working on the protection of, of the Dutch metal leaf. It's actually another level to the work because um, wh whatever we've done to the tree or to the trunk, um, it'll still have its own lifespan and it'll, like, like a human, it'll age and it'll decompose eventually. Um, but we're hoping that the process of decomposition will take longer than anticipated. And, and this is where maintenance would come, has to come in because you have to maintain this. You can't just leave it be. Um, so the more you spend time on maintenance, the better and the longer the process of the um, survival would be. So having the tree here and getting to this final stage is actually a big relief and, and I'm very pleased with the results. Um, so I hope people would be too. That's the final thing I would like to thank everybody that helped the project and uh, persevered with the project as well because as I said we've taken quite a long time to get to this stage 
um, and uh, we've met some amazing people through it. So I, I just want to say final thank you and without everybody that's been involved um, in, in making this happen, I would have not been able to do it. Um, um, no matter how much time you give to something and, and, and believe in, in a project, if you don't have the support behind you, sometimes that doesn't happen, right? So, so yeah, thanks to everybody.